let's start discussing acid-base equilibria. And we're going to begin by reviewing an Arrhenius definition of an acid and a base. And we may or may not have called it an Arrhenius acid in the first semester of general chemistry, but that's, that's the definition we were using. Because an Arrhenius acid is an acid uh, or an, uh, is, uh, an, is an acid that is a substance that produces H plus or hydrogen ions in solution. And uh, you may remember hydrochloric acid. And that hydrochloric acid was a strong acid, and it still is, and that it broke down 100% into hydrogen ions, H pluses, and chloride ions, Cl minuses, okay? And uh, we also had uh, weak acids, and a good example of a weak acid is acetic acid. And acetic acid was, well, in first semester general chemistry, we would tend to say that a weak acid broke down into H pluses, less than 5%, and we're going to talk a lot about this, uh, this unit, this chapter. But now we know that we have the subject of equilibrium, that we will use our equilibrium arrows for this part, and that uh, we will get, but we will still get H plus and acetate ion right there. And we said that this happens, so we didn't use uh, equilibrium arrows before, but now we do. And this is going to be less than 5% until it stops or reaches equilibrium. And um, base is a substance that produces hydroxide ions. And we had sodium hydroxide. And it broke down 100% because it was a strong base into sodium ions. plus hydroxide ions. And we also talked a little bit about ammonia. And we said that ammonia was, or you may have in your previous Gen Chem class, Gen Chem 1, is a weak base. And so it will, aha, ammonia is where the Arrhenius definition of an acid, or of a base in particular, breaks down. And so we're going to talk next about a more a broader definition of acid and base. And that's going to be the Bronsted-Lowry definition of an acid and base. And in this case, an acid is a proton donor and a base is a proton acceptor, where a proton is H+, also called a hydrogen ion. And for example, if you take a hydrogen atom, atom, come on. Let's try this down here. It has one proton plus one electron. Take away that electron to get an H plus, and uh, you get just a proton. Now, uh, this is a, going to be a more expansive definition, meaning more things will qualify as acids right now. But everything that was an acid from Gen Chem 1 is still an acid, and everything that's a base is still a base. Well, let's see how this goes now. So this is going to be HCl, and I well, neglected to mention this. Um, so this is going to be generally in water, but this definition is most applicable. So let's take our hydrochloric acid, which is aqueous, which means it's in water, now the reaction for Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases will include water as a reactant. Um, this is HCl. It goes uh, essentially 100%. And so we wouldn't necessarily put uh, equilibrium arrows, but we will now that we know about equilibrium. We'll put e we might as well put equilibrium arrows everywhere since every reaction is at some, in some sense at equilibrium where every reaction is at equilibrium, whether it appears like it or not, when it finishes. All right, and here's how this works. Let's see if I can make this work now. 
Um, so H has her acid, is her acid, it's going to have an H plus. That H plus is going to join the other. So here's our H plus. And that means our products are going to be H3O plus. And Cl minus for chloride. And this H3O plus, its name is hydronium. And uh, for the Bronsted Lowry definition of an ester or base, um, let's see if I can make that go away. Well, let's just keep it. Um, you're going to see hydronium a lot because you're going to have an acid donate a proton to water. So uh, I like to call hydronium the ambassador of acids, because we will see it so much. Please write that down on your notes, ambassador of acids. And, uh, right. So that's all we're going to write for now. Um, let's go to the next page. And now for this definition, we're going to have ammonia is going to be able to be uh, taken care of inside our Bronsted-Lowry definition, because now... We're going to add water. We're going to be at equilibrium. And now, because uh, ammonia is a base, it's going to accept an H+. plus. So now one of the ones from water is going to come over here. And our products are going to be NH4+. Plus. plus. Well, when you take an H plus away from H2O, you're left with hydroxide. And true enough, we still have, uh, hold on here, we still have our OH uh, minus, which was our, uh, going to be our ambassador of bases, and please write that on your page. Um, but what's new is now we have this H plus, and remember H plus uh, donor is an acid, and H plus acceptor, or a proton acceptor, is going to be a base. And now what we can do, though, is since this reaction goes both ways, and all reactions do, in fact, let's go back to the previous page, we can now think about the products and whether the products are acids and bases. And like I said, hydronium is the ambassador of acids, so it is still an acid. It's going to donate an H plus for the reverse reaction to Cl minus so that when this reaction uh, goes in the reverse direction, it will make HCl. So hydronium is an acid. And uh, here we have, so base, because it's going to be accepting a proton. We have an acid here. We have an acid and a base. Okay. And so now, from now on, uh, when we do this in water, using Brown said Lowry definition, we are going to be able to classify all the reactants and all the products as acids and bases. So now let's do this one here. We said uh, this, we know this is a base. It is still a base. We know this is an acid now. Water is an acid because it is donating a proton. And then on the other side, if we think of this reaction in the reverse direction, we have an acid right here and a base. And our H plus, that fit on good, an H plus moving in the other direction. And so what you might note is that here we have water being an acid. Move back one page. Here we have water being a base. And so the what water acts as. So uh, what water acts as depends on its environment. So water can be an acid or a base. Depending upon its environment. No, that shouldn't be there. 
Okay, the water can be an acid or a base, depending upon its environment. We gain some things too. Now, NH4 plus is an acid, and we will see that it does have acidic properties. Um, Cl minus is a base. And so again, brown sud lowry definition of acids and bases is a much more expansive uh, uh, definition of acids and bases. And there's a term for this uh, now that water can be an acid or base that is amphoteric. That means that water can be an acid or a base. In fact, we will write the reaction in which H2O is both the reactant and product. It is in equilibrium and we can have one of them and it doesn't matter which donate a proton to the other one, creating hydronium as one of our products, and hydroxide as the other product. And once you write the H plus in which way it's going, we can see that one of the waters is an acid, one of the waters is a base, and just like you'd expect, Hydronium, our ambassador of acids, is again an acid. Hydroxide, by accepting a proton, is a base, again, as you move the reaction in the backwards direction. That's where these names in blue are coming from. Now, uh, other amphoteric species uh, you might see is bicarbonate ion. So bicarbonate can react with itself in a reaction And it's got a proton, so we can give it up. That means that since it's giving up a proton, this is the acid, this is the base. And we're left with, well, take the H plus away, you get CO3 two minus. And uh, carbonic acid, and what you might imagine You can do the same for the products. Here's our acid and here's our base. And we will see amongst other things that bicarbonate uh, can be an acid, it can be a base, depending upon what its environment is. Carbonate, this is new, is a base. And carbonic acid, H2CO3, well, we're used to that being an acid, a weak acid that we've seen before.